hello everybody welcome back to my channel this is my second go at this video uh, I was uh, interrupted by some customers so hopefully we've got a clear run now so I decided I'd just start the video again and take it from the beginning so I've got an order for three meander box to make and I thought I'd bring you along for the ride uh, a lot of you probably know what a meander book is and probably have even made one yourself uh, but if you don't know what one is um, I hope this video is instructional for you so this is a little meander book which I've made I sold out of my uh, last two uh, about two weeks ago so I made this one last week to replace my stock so I've still got some more to make for for the shop because um, one really isn't enough um, and in the meantime, the person who bought those last two has rung me or messaged me and requested that she wants three more. So I've prepared uh, two. So this one I actually did in the, my last attempt at this video. Um, so that one's all glued together and ready for the next stage. This one is cut and folded, but it's not glued. Uh, this one is complete and in the shop as I said. So what is a meander book? A meander book, I think the name comes from the way the paper folds and you'll see as I do it that it, it meanders like a stream would meander backwards and forwards. Uh, so that's where the name comes from. And they're cute little books and there's little places for tags throughout them. There's a little corner pocket. So I like to do them to a theme. Uh, this one is suitable for a, a more masculine uh, purpose. So a gift for a, a guy or a, a young lad. So it's a very my first actually masculine themed one that I've done. And I thought, well, I really shouldn't leave the guys out of this because they're really cute. And when you theme it for a, a man, it's... There's no reason a guy wouldn't like it. So that's a finished one, and it's just a ribbon that I used to tie it. So let's get started. Uh, because of my false attempt at this, uh, with being interrupted and everything, I'm close to the shop shutting. And so the shop might be open a little bit longer unless I duck out mid-video and close up. But let's just get started and see how far we get. So I've got a bit of scrapbook paper here. 12 by 12 single sided paper which I prefer for this project most of the videos or I think all the videos I've seen for this for making these meander books have used double sided paper I personally think it's a bit of a waste for double sided paper because in these meander books the only time you'll see the back page is like in the back of the pockets so there's a bit of white there and there's the white there and I think that's a nice contrast to the pattern so I don't worry about that you will also get white on the front and the back if you're using single sided paper and I just cover it with squares of another paper and then I always cover the spine with fabric because I like the look and it hides the, the folds so like this one this actually this one that's all glued together so this just gives it a nice finished look by covering it in fabric and makes it a little bit sturdier as well. And the by adding this paper onto the front and back, that also makes it a bit sturdier. The rest of the pages are all doubled over, so they're glued together. So they're nice and strong. So I think single-sided paper is fine. So if you've got double-sided paper, use that. Single-sided is perfectly fine. I like to use a medium weight scrapbook paper, so not too thin because you can get some cheap, really cheap ones that are, are really thin, but not cardstock either. Uh, the firmer the paper, the harder it is going to be to work with, and because everything's doubled up, it becomes quite sturdy, uh, and the glue helps hold it all together. So just a regular piece of scrapbook paper. I'm just using what I've been given. Uh, so I can't tell you where it came from, how much it was or anything like that. 
just that a friend gifted me quite a large supply of random scrapbook papers. And it's going to keep me going for quite a while. Right, so fold in half. Being very precise, as precise as you can be, with lining up your edges. It makes a difference in the outcome of the book when you come to glue it together. Right, so taking the bottom, fold it up to that fold line. As close as you can. Sometimes it helps to just lift that back bit up to see how close you are, because the pattern can be quite hard to see sometimes where the line actually is. So I like to crease it with my thumbnails, just run them along. Okay, turn it around and do the same on the other side. So folding it in to the middle. Trying to keep it nice and straight. And give it a good crease. Okay, open it out. And you've now got your paper separated into four columns with three fold lines. Now, if your paper has a direction to it, uh, you will need to pay attention as to which way you do it. I like to use papers that don't really have a direction. This one does with its leaves, but it's not going to matter in the finished product. But just a warning, if you're using a directional paper, just be careful which way you fold it. Okay, so I fold, turn it so your folds are vertical to you. And now we do the same thing the other way. And this is where it gets tricky if you've got quite thick paper to fold against those vertical folds. So into the in half and give a good crease along that middle line. Okay, open it up. And exactly the same as we did before, fold the bottom up to that middle line you just created. Getting as close as you can without going over that middle fold. Okay, turn it around and the same the other way. So now what we end up with is a piece of paper that's divided into squares with four squares across and four squares down. And that's the basis of our book. Now comes the cutting. And the cutting is possibly one of the trickiest steps. Sometimes it's really hard to see where your fold lines are. Uh, it can be, depending on the pattern of your paper, you may want to turn it over to see where the lines are. When I did this one on the last video that you won't get to see, I actually had to turn it over because the stars were just messing with my eyes and I couldn't see the lines at all. So if you're having trouble with the pattern, turn it over and cut the other side. And I think I might do that with this, just so you can see what I'm doing. Right, so starting on... So this is where you want to be careful. Uh, if you do have directional paper, it won't matter because it's going to be all over the place anyway through the nature of folding. So just forget what I said about directional paper and just do it because as you fold, they're going to end up every which way. All right, so taking your paper, we want to cut up the first fold line to the top of the third square or the bottom of the last square. So you want one, two, three squares the top corner of that. So you're only cutting three squares along that fold line, trying to keep on that fold line as much as possible. It will make a difference when you come to fold it as to whether all your pages line up nicely or whether they're kind of up and down, which doesn't give as nice a look. But even if that happens, there are ways you can hide it or you can use it in like it's supposed to be that way. So don't ever give up on a project because you think you've messed it up. Right, now turn your paper the other way. Sorry, I'm trying to rush this because I know I'm short on time. And I really wanted to share this. 
Right, so in your next fold, you're going to do the same thing, but from the opposite direction. So this one was cut from here to there. This one we're cutting from here to here. So again, you're only doing three squares, not cutting through that last square. Now, if you do cut through that last square by accident, which I must admit I have done, it's okay. You can still remedy the situation. It's not just a lost cause. You are still able to use your project because these get glued together anyway. So you just glue it as though it never came apart. Okay, you preferably don't want to have to do that, but if it happens, hey, no biggie. Just glue it together and carry on. Right, so turn it up again. And this is the same as the first cut. So up through the first square, dropping at the last square. So if you can see, it's kind of a zigzag. So up there, then up down there, and now we're going up here. So three cuts in total. So keep to that fold line. Hope you can see this, guys. To that last bottom of the last square and there we have it so pull it apart like that it's like an M or a W depending which direction you're looking at okay so I'll flip it over now and I like to start off with the pages with the cuts going horizontal I just find it easier and I want to start this way. I like to start with this, the cut going this direction at the bottom. Okay, so your first one, what we're going to do is fold forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. Okay, so your first one is always forward, like so. Nice and simple, just over like that. So your face that you want inside your book that you want to be showing needs to be on the inside so when that first fold your paper that you want should be on the inside like that so forward and then we fold under then we go forward again so I hope you can see what I'm doing now we've got a corner here on the corners you always go under for the corner so fold it under and then over, under, over at the corner, we go under again. Then over, under, over, round the corner, go under, over, under, and finish on with an over. And there we have our book all folded. And you can see there, I haven't folded very well. It's, it's a bit uneven. Some of that I'll be able to remedy as we glue, and other bits I will have to amend in other ways. It's so easy to get it misaligned if you're just slightly off on your folds or your cutting. Okay, now at this stage, before you start gluing, there's no top or bottom. But it's important that you choose which way is going to be top before you start gluing so that your pockets are going to make sense once you start putting pockets in. You don't want to have a pocket at the bottom where things fall out. That won't make any sense. Or a corner pocket that, so a corner pocket should be this way, but if you're working this way and you decide to have a corner pocket there, it's going to be upside down. It's not going to work. So make sure you know which way is front and which way is back before you start gluing or at least before you start adding pockets okay so we're all ready for gluing now i've got my glue here and i've got a, a punch a circle punch for creating the thumb spaces for the tags for the pockets like this one see this there so just a, a punch or whatever you've got if you haven't got a punch cut it out with scissors um, Whatever you've got really, just make do. Okay, so I'm going to glue this first one. Gonna, so your first one, that's the inside of your book. So the first one you want to glue is this one. 
and you don't need to glue where the fold is because that will keep it together so you just need to do around the three edges now the glue for this you can use double-sided tape if you wish you can use glue stick you can use liquid glue like I'm using I don't recommend PVA as that uh, tends to buckle paper and if you're giving this as a gift you don't really want the paper all buckled right so when you've got that all glued around the edges just fold over and press it down if you get glue out the edges wipe it up uh, sometimes it they'll actually as you get towards the end of the book you'll find that some pages are stuck together usually it's just a little bit on the edge um, but just try and clean as you go so you don't end up tearing any pages that are accidentally glued together that you don't want glued together right so this so my first page I generally like to leave just as a straight page with no pocket this next one I'm going to put a side pocket in so I'll just take my punch and roughly line it up so it's even just halfway in and that punch right so when I'm doing this I'm trying to keep the book the same way around so this is the front this is the back so I flip that up that way I keep the book in the right order and I'm not I'm not going to accidentally put pockets the wrong way around so don't need to glue along this fold line so we just need to do two sides on this so allowing the space for the pocket to be open so we can put something in it I'm just trying to keep a relatively narrow line of glue so that there's room to put a tag or something in. If you take up too much space with your glue or adhesive, then it's going to be really tiny, whatever you want to put in there. Right, so fold that back down. And there we've got our first pocket. See, I don't know if you can see that, there's a slight white line at the bottom. That's where the page hasn't lined up. Now that I can probably trim without too much effect. It's not going to be too noticeable. Or you could put a strip of washi tape across to hide it. Um, you could distress it, distress all around the edges to hide any areas like that. Add a bit of trim, lace, so many things you could do, a bit of ribbon. If it's a bit bigger then we start to have a bit more of an issue but you can still hide it still disguise it many of the same ways uh, but just trying to get it as close as possible while you're doing the folding and cutting just minimizes those little areas okay our next page so next page is that way so I'm just folding the book that way and again don't need to glue near the fold just around the open three sides I could put a pocket here but I like to space out the pockets so there's a mixture of plain pages and pockets because there's lots of other fun things we can do on those straight pages okay so that was that one and this one I will make a fold down corner pocket so how much you want to fold over is entirely up to you. You can fold down a little, a lot, you, and with this tab you can fold it back up and create a little concertina effect and glue that down. You can leave it loose, you can glue it down, you can have it flip up so it's got something hidden under there. I've done all of those before and at this stage I like to leave that little flap loose until I decide what I want to do with it. Okay so in this one fold it down and you want to fold on two sides so down this side and down this side so don't glue along here because then it will be harder to put something in it's just a, again try and keep a thin line of glue or whatever you're using uh, this is easier uh, not as easy if you want to use a glue stick I actually recommend a glue like this, a liquid glue, because it's, it dries and then it's no longer sticky. Whereas if you use double-sided tape, 
it always remains sticky on the edges and your things can actually stick to the side of the tape. Okay, so that's that page done. So the next one, we'll just do a plain page. So again, three sides. And this is why this book becomes so sturdy, is because it's got all this doubling up of pages secured with glue, so they're nice and strong. And they have really nice feel to them, nice weight. They don't feel flimsy at all. Okay, so this one, just glue down as well. You could always do another pocket here if you want, but I'm going to do an, a pocket on the next one. I believe it's the next one. So I do end up with more straight pages than pages with pockets. I only like to have three pockets. Occasionally I'll do an extra one, but I really prefer the three. Because uh, sometimes I'll add in a little pocket on the page itself. Okay, so this one I'll put in a top pocket. So it folds that way. Again, just eyeballing about the middle. So this one. Just doing the side that isn't going to be folded. Move down the edge. Oops, I've got a bit of glue on the edge there. And I think that was the last one. Yep, that was the last one. So that's my wee meander book to the glue down stage. So I've got, we'll cover that with a piece of paper. First page, second page. It's got a side pocket, third is a plain page, fourth it's got a little corner pocket with a flap or glued down, however I want to do that when I come to decorating. See I've got a bit up here, a little bit of white, don't know if you can see that sticking out, so I'll probably trim that off. Next page is plain page, then we've got a top pocket. And then we've got our last page. I've got a bit of glue coming out the edges, sticking some things. Okay, so there's it. There's the basis for me and a book. And from there, I will start decorating. So I do the cover last. So I do all the decorating first. I fix any areas that need just a little bit of either trimming or covering as I go so that I can match whatever I'm using to what I do on the pages so that the colour or the theme matches. So I don't do it first, I just do it as I go so everything looks cohesive and natural like it's supposed to be there. You don't want a piece of um, zigzag washi tape on a page and then want to do a vintage theme. It's going to look a bit wrong. <laughs> so I recommend that you fix any little areas as you go and then you'll know how you want to actually deal with them bit of glue just on the edges so just be careful with your glue and clean it up before it gets really dry and sticks all your pages together okay so there's a little meander book if you want to see me decorating these uh, leave me a comment comment uh, it'd be great if you could give my video a like uh, sus subscribe to my channel if you don't already and you like what you see I do a range of different things but I love paper crafting and I'd love to have you along for, for the ride, because it's a lot of fun. I'm having fun anyway. Okay guys, thank you for watching, and if you haven't given one of these a go, give it a go and let me know how you get on. Uh, if I've explained things clearly, if you're not sure about something, uh, please ask. I'll be happy to help. Okay guys, I'll catch you next video. Bye.